Hello everybody at the Lee Diecast and we are back and this time we're downtown or at least in the uh in the ghetto district here. <laughs> but we are going to be taking a look at the Highway 35 35th anniversary Hot Wheels cars. I don't have all of these. There was quite a few of these and I've picked these up. I've kind of cobbled together my little collection here over the last year. This is one of my favorite series of Hot Wheels mainly because of the detail work and you guys that have been watching the show know that I just love the Hot Wheels cars with the fancy graphics on them. Don't really care if they're fancy cars or not for the most part. I just really love the graphics on them. And uh, But these cars have some some different features that we'll point out. Here is the, I'll get it here for the camera, there is the Hot Wheels 35th Anniversary logo. I can't get it to focus there. Uh, well, 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 maybe. Maybe not. There you go. That's 35th anniversary logo. Uh, these cars came in little tubes. They were kind of in little little uh, cryogenic tube looking containers. And I don't have any of the containers. I've actually picked mine up from either damaged containers uh, where the car was fine or from uh, lots that I've bought. So like I said, I've kind of cobbled this group together. And they've been sitting here for about a year with the hope that I would have the whole collection to show you. But I've also been going out of my way here to clean up the shop and get rid of some of these uh, sets of cars that have been waiting for a video. So these guys' time has come, and if I get more of them, I'll just show you. But I, I am not sure that all collectors really know about these cars. So just to give you an example, here's a little Nomad. Uh, these all had co-molded wheels, and the co-molded wheels, again with my focus there, the co-molded wheels, you don't see much anymore, and they are two-part wheels. So the rim is a molded color, and then you've got that that slick tire. The, the black part is a separate one. And they've molded, or they've, they've put them together. So that's the co-molded co -molded piece of it. And the rims can be various colors. The interior of the rim can be a different color than the exterior. But for the most part, they all have that that black uh, slick tire on them. Very good on the racetrack, so I'm not sure why they um, they gave up on the cold molded wheels. Or maybe they haven't given up on them. I just haven't seen them much. The cold molded wheels didn't just show up in this series. In an earlier video, I said that the cold molded wheels were a giveaway that they were from the 35th anniversary series, but they're not. But they have not showed up uh, much at all. Here is a, um, a Purple Passion, and this one is part of my, my favorite decoration collection that's in my office, so I'm not going to take it out of the blister. I know, I'm kind of weird that way. I take cars that are valuable out of the blister, but I don't take my favorite decorated cars out of the blister. But uh, this one has those wheels, and this one was from uh, 2004. So they were using them in the early 2000s. Uh, it's just a matter of, of uh, you know, finding cars with them on them. I have two other cars here. This one is a slingshot, which there happens to be a slingshot in the series. See them right there? Yeah, right there. That's a slingshot. Uh, but this one had the, the cool molded wheels. Gray, gray rims. Silver highlights. But then again, those slicked wheels. Uh, there was also this, uh, this guy was called like Candy something. I don't remember his name. I've asked for this one's name numerous times. You guys have told me and then I forget it, but it's, oh, I think it's Eye Candy. Isn't this Eye Candy? I think it's Eye Candy. Um, this one also had it. And I think these two might have been in the same series. See, they have the same coloring on them. Uh, they might have been in this little same sub-series in the main lines. And I don't remember when those came out, but it was in the early 2000s, I think. So, I haven't seen the co molded wheels in a while. So, let's get on to looking at these. So, what I'm going to do is we're just going to back each one out of its spot here and we'll take a look at it. There is, this is Maelstrom, I think. Nope, it's Zotic. <laughs> Not even close. Maelstrom sort of looks like that, doesn't it? But, anyways, that's Zotic. 
And this one, we'll get a close-up of it here. There is Zotic. Look at the cool graphics on these, though. There it is with the 16 on it. Very cool car. So, Zotic is going to drive off. Next up, we've got this one-fourth mile coupe. One of my favorites from the series because of the graphics. This was also the car was the first one I got that kind of turned me on to this series. I had seen the series, but really hadn't given it any thought. And then this one showed up in a lot, and I just really like the detail with the red painted highlights there. The uh, cool graphics on it, you can see. Very cool graphics. Uh, if you're going to pick these up at a show or a collector's meet of some sort, be prepared to pay a little bit of money. They were not particularly easy to find when they came out, they, and they were collectible. And like I said, the packaging on these is kind of special too. So they tend to go for some money. Now, I don't think they're really worth much overall I don't think they're really going to be something that holds their value very much so it's they're kind of a niche collection but um, you know certainly if you want them and you want the one you see in, in perfect packaging you're probably going to have to pay somewhere around eight bucks each for them next up is Red Baron there he is one of the original Redline cars this time he's kind of done up again with those co-molded co tires. This guy does not have a lot of real estate to do much with. Oh, one thing you might have noticed, they have numbers on them. You saw a 16 on Zotic, and this is number 31. This guy is not the best, best choice for this type of car, but because he just does not have a whole lot of real estate. We'll back out number 28, which is this very cool Mega Duty. One of the favorites from this series. This one is kind of hard to find. The, as you'd expect, the truck's very popular, but look at all the graphics on this guy. Get that to focus there. There you go. Number 28, it's got little bombs on it. I'm going to turn that around so you can see it. The Dune Rats. The other side has the same decorations on it. Next up is the F-150. Another popular one. I think it's a 97. F-150. This one also has the little bombs on it. This one is number 25. Takes no prisoners. like the little rat skeleton there. That is different on, on both sides on this one. Nothing on the back, but it does have the little rat on the back there. We'll drive him off. And next up is this little T-Bird. Not surprised to see this one in the casting. This guy tends to show up in, in a lot of the series where they do something with the detailings. I think it's kind of a favorite of this crowd. But it's got the flaming skeleton there. You can see it's number 32. Scorchers. Looks like the same tampos on both sides on that one. It's got the cool flames on the back. We'll drive him off. And rolling on up. 
up as the Chevy Nomad. Another one that tends to show up in these kind of retro series quite a bit. We've got, what does that say, Wave Rippers. Looks like it is number four. I do like when they, when they do these series, when they work the numbers in. Because uh, I tend to take these out of the packaging, and I'm not fond of when they put the, the uh, numbers and so forth on the packaging only. Because then I don't always know what it is. I like it when it's on the car. That way I can just keep the car. Slingshot is next. We got a jam up here going out of the parking lot. Here is Slingshot. And Slingshot is number eight. Oh, there you go. Eight. Street Breed. Black and purple. I don't know if the black's going to show up. But really nice work. Now these are decals. They're not tampos. Wouldn't be able to get that kind of detail with tampos probably. Very nice. Next up is Backdraft. Backdraft is one I don't think we have seen lately. I don't even know if they make Backdraft anymore. But he's got that surfboard kind of jammed down there and there in that science fiction-y surfboard holder thing there. There he is. He is number three. Yeah, Backdraft. I do like that one. I like that, that casting. We just don't see him too often much. Next up is this 70 Roadrunner that will back up out here. He's part of the Scorchers. If I remember right, they were kind of like sub-series in this. Or there were teams. Maybe it was teams. But you can see that uh, he is part of the Scorchers. So see this guy. He goes with, with him. The Scorchers all had kind of the red. Here, we'll make a, a Scorchers team photo here. Just to kind of give you an idea of all the scorchers. I think I have all the scorchers. Yeah, I think so. They were all in the 30s, if I remember right. There was the scorchers, the wave racers, the... Uh, is this guy part of the scorchers family? I don't remember. <laughs> I think he's part of the scorchers family. But uh, there was a bunch of them all, all in the same family here we'll line them up for you over here so you could kind of collect them by teams um what were the road there were road masters the skeleton skull guys the little kind of tech guys i don't remember all of them but anyways we'll take a look at our road runner which they put out a series like this I, i'm not the little sub-series they've been coming out with, like the classics and the rock and roll series and the highway series, they're nice. I, I like them better than the main lines, but they just aren't that creative, I don't think. This one, I forgot what this guy's called. He is the Motocross. Yeah, he's kind of got that roll cage thing. We saw a bunch of this guy for a few years, and then he's kind of disappeared. He is part of the Beast... Road Beast series. Well, you'll have to you'll have to trust me. There he is, Road Beast, and there he is. This is another one. Not a lot of not a lot of footprint on this guy. He is number eighteen, obviously. It looks like this back part would go up and down, but it doesn't. Next up is this is ballistic, isn't it? Isn't this? This is, I think this is ballistic. The name's not on the bottom, but I think that guy's ballistic. That was one of the first cars I got when I started collecting again. Not when I was a kid. I had Matchbox when I was a kid. But one of the first Hot Wheels I had as an adult. <laughs> He's part of the Road Beast or Road Master. I forgot what we called him. Road Beast series. Number 15. He is team leader. He's a leader. 
Getting towards the end, here is Diora 2. This one has its rubber band on it still to keep those surfboards in place. You see that a lot with uh, the Dioras. This one is a lot of people's, it would make a lot of people's top 50 castings. <laughs> He's part of the Wave Race series. He would be with those surfboards. Those are nice little surfboards. I have seen these surfboards scavenged a lot for... Uh, customs because of that cool design those two surfboards make but there he is the Diora 2 and last but not least out of our the ones I do have here's the El Camino uh, this one's got one of my favorite graphics on it from this series and he is from the uh, dune rods and we had another dune rod I don't remember who was who was on Team Dune Rod? I don't remember. <laughs> but there was another one there. Um, but this one's got kind of that cracked earth thing going on. And he's got the little skeletons there. I would love, when I do my customs, I would love them to kind of go along with this type of theme where I had reoccurring themes. I haven't really had a chance to do that because I... I uh, make one or two, and then something else comes along, and I either end up doing something for, for uh, you know, a group of people or a client, and then back to my own stuff, and by then I've kind of forgotten what I'm doing. So I never really had the chance to do it right. Okay, so that is all of them that I have. So I would love to get more of these, and part of the reason I do these videos is so that I can send out the message for people to trade. So if anybody has either the ones I'm missing or some of them or the whole set, that's fine too, and you're looking to either trade or whatever, whatever you want. If you're looking to sell them at a decent price or trade or... You're at the shows that you know I go to, and you can bring them there, and I'll buy them. Whatever it is, let me know, because I would like to get this whole collection. And if I do get the whole collection, I'll do another video. So, I hope you enjoyed the uh, little town gathering here of the Hot Wheels 35th Anniversary Cars. And I will see everybody in the next video. Bye-bye.